and welcome to this, the second video demonstration in a series about interoperability between GeoModel software and FeeFlow software. Today's demonstration is entitled How to Build a New Layered Finite Element Mesh file to suit the extents and topography of an existing GeoModeler model. The existing GeoModeler model which we speak of is Tutorial A as presented in the first video of this series. The idea is to facilitate the export of this geology model into a layered mesh file ready for that purpose. But before we launch the FeeFlow software for that purpose, we need to view the project properties of, ge of the GeoModel project. Project, properties, and just have a look about how, how the extents were set up. So you'll notice that a real-world coordinate system has been used and also that there are project extents which would represent northings and eastings within that projection. Also that the model is 10,000 metres by 10,000 metres in X and Y and a further 10,000 metres in the Z direction. Other things to notice about this are that it contains the DTM grid file we can make use of this grid, which is stored in the GeoModel project, again in FeeFlow. And now we're going to launch the FeeFlow software. The first thing we need to do is say File, New. We're going to select 2D or Layered Mesh. And we're also going to select d Manual Domain Setup. So having retrieved the properties window, I'm showing them side by side now. When we're setting up the range in min through to max of the northings or the y-axis, you see you can just retrieve them here from 2 million through to 2 million 10,000. And likewise for the x range you can type this value in here. 100,000 through to 110,000 in the X direction or the Eastings values. When you've done this in the inter interface of FeeFlow, just go next and the global coordinate offset means where is the origin of our local coordinate system which is going to be 00, zero out here away from the model extent. Say OK and it proceeds to the next screen. So the screen includes uh, the model area and we're going to add a map to it. These are shape files. The first one is the model extent which is uh, presented here now. What we need to do is is just convert it to a super mesh polygon which means we're selecting the area this is this is just a, a limit of the square likewise we want to denote the projection of the fault in geomodeler and so if we just return to that for a moment you can see this here is the projection of the line and we also have that preserved as a polyline which we can now also add as a map and this one's the projected fault on the surface. So we open that now. And now we select it and convert to super mesh lines. So with both the model extent and the fault projection ready, we are now going to mesh the area. And so I proceed to view the panel about meshing. And the thing to do is choose to triangulate that just in a 2D layer for the moment. You'll see in the super mesh if you select that and the polygon there's a number of proposed elements. We're going to change that for the 2D mesh to 5000. 
So the target is 5,000 elements to be created in this 2D mesh. Leave all the other defaults and then select to generate the mesh. Returning to Geomodeler, the next thing we aim to do is to export the DTM file so that we have available the topography in an ASCII format for importation into FeeFlow. So let's get prepared to do that. I'd like first of all to hide the model. We can say model, erase all model geology. I'd like to view the DTM that we currently have under the grids and meshes. Going to the field DTM, right click, field visualization manager and display it on the topography section. One thing to notice about this DTM grid, it is at a reasonably low resolution. We're going to improve on that before we make the export product ready for FeeFlow. The thing to do under 3D Geology is to right click Create 2D, 3D grids from the model. Ask for elevation. And choose of our 10,000 meter by 10,000 meter surface topography section. We're going to choose a cell size of 50 meters and say OK. Immediately the new grid pops into the grids and meshes area. We're going to expand that and have a look. First of all, I'll hide the first grid. Selecting the new elevation, visualizing it again. Now we have a very much finer resolution. This is the one we're going to use and take out for the fee flow purpose. So going to the model grid, we're going to right click, export, we're going to choose a grid format that's uh, one of our simplest ASCII formats. It's called a semi. We're going to browse to a suitable place. OK. And then give it a new name, high resolution DTM. And we're going to save it. It pops into the folder. So that's been created and so let's check in Windows now uh, at the semi file that's been created. We'll first of all open it in a notepad. You'll see that uh, there are three columns X, Y and Z. Uh, the way that uh, FeeFlow is expecting to see the format. We're going to change this uh, header file to say simple X, Y and Z. And we're going to save it uh, first of all as a, a text file. And later as a DAT file. Windows to change that to that. And now it should be ready for import into FeeFlow. So returning to FeeFlow, we're going to stay in the Maps panel and right click Add Maps to load the new in the list, you can select it. Next we apply Edit 3D Layer Configuration and we see for the first time our FEM in a single layer. 
We also recognise slice 1 is at 0 elevation and slice 2 at minus 1 metre elevation. The next thing we need to do is apply our topography. This is a simple function of drop and drag, so we can take our DTM file and drag it onto slice 1. Immediately it will apply the 2D triangulation to the surface of our mesh. So the next part of this video is presented by Alexia from DHI. Uh, for the bottom, you I think you put it to minus 2000. Okay, and then to add layers, uh, if you want to have a, an homogeneous distribution between the, the two slides and clear, uh, and select insert slides between, and here you choose how many uh, layers you want, and FIFLO will directly um, uh, interpolate elevation so that it's uh, it's homogeneously distributed. So here we go. Otherwise, if you want to really control like the thickness of uh, your layer, for example, you can select slice two and say that you want uh, to insert a slice above. And here, in this case, you can decide the de the, the distance. But uh, in this case, it's a simple model, we, so we don't really want to do this. So now we click on OK. And automatically, uh, FIFLO opens uh, the 3D view. So here you have a lot of exaggeration. So you can go to navigation, projection, and you can put one and press enter to have no exaggeration anymore. In the last phase, we show how to import the fault to the finite element mesh to be modelled as a 2D discrete feature. So to do this, we need first to select uh, the faces of the element where we want to, uh, to apply the fault. So we need to, to choose select join faces. And here in the slice one, we will select it first on the slice one. We are going to use the shapefile of the, of the projected fault to select it. So I double click on the, on the shapefile. Here I say that I, I use a tool to select by map line. And here, I guess I, we will need to play with the snapping distance. Maybe if we put just 10 meters, it will be OK. And here we can select. OK, so it's perfect. Here we have the selection just of the, of the line. Uh, we can see it as well, the selection uh, a bit in, in 3D. Uh, so it's we can see it better. I will just deactivate the, uh, the hydraulic head and as well the faces. So here we can see that we have the, the selection, but it's just on size one. And obviously we want to we want to have the fault going uh, down to the model. So from the 2D view, we can uh, copy paste the selection from this layer to the layer uh, below. So here you click on copy selection to slice layer and you can just select all the layer and press OK. And here you can see directly in the 3D view that you have uh, all this plane, the full plane selected. So once you have the, the selection, you need to create the discrete feature. So in the data panel, you can go, you can click on discrete feature, uh, click right, and so you add joint face feature elements. 
and here you can choose uh, which uh, equation or the flow will be like the flow equation will be solved uh, inside this feature so for the faults we want uh, the Darcy equation to be solved so we choose Darcy and here automatically you will have a discrete feature um, that will be create and then here you can select uh, for example the conductivity and here uh, you can change you can apply the, the conductivity you want for the fold so we can I don't know put uh, 10 to the minus 4 and apply it and so here we can see that we have the conductivity for the fold to 10 to the minus 4 uh, you can as well uh, by default we have a, a thickness of 10 centimeters you can change this and if you have for example different faults or different discrete feature you can here um, change the name I think where is this rename discrete feature so you can I don't know call it faults one for example And yeah, basically that's it. With your new finite element mesh created in FeeFlow as a layered mesh, we are now ready with this product to actually return to step one of the series and fill the centroids with geology. But one last step here is of course to save our finite element mesh file save as. You have two options on the finite element mesh formats. We're going to change ASCII and change and save. And this concludes today's demonstration. Please visit our website and see that uh, there are catalogues of other online training services. Thank you very much.